As we do our investigation into finding a fair division of stuff, so far we've been working with stuff that could be cut in several ways to divide up evenly. But the question still remains, how can we divide things that cannot be cut? For example, if we're splitting up a house and a car between three people, how do we divide those two things between three people? Because we can't cut the house and we can't cut the car into pieces. Well, this leads to what we're going to call the method of sealed bids. And here's how sealed bids work. Each party lists in secret a dollar amount they value each item. Then a fair share for each party is calculated. We take the total price of the items and divide by the number of people or the number of parties. Notice this fair share is going to be different for each person because they don't all have the same total of their items. That's OK. That's really what makes this all work. Then each item is awarded to the highest bidder. Then everyone needs to pay for what they got to make it fair. Steps four and five are the allocation of the money to make it fair. If a person received more item value than their fair share, They must pay the difference into what I'm going to call the pot. So they've paid the difference from a fair share. So maybe I got $10,000 more worth of stuff than a fair share. Then I will pay $10,000 in cash to make it even. If a person received less item values than their fair share, they will receive the difference from the pot. So maybe I received stuff that was $10,000 less than what I considered a fair share. The pot would pay me that $10,000 difference. So now I'm at my fair share in amount. This is called the initial allocation. At this point, everyone has achieved exactly a fair share how they defined it on their secret bids at the beginning. However, usually there's money left over. in the pot. The surplus 
is divided evenly between the parties. This is the final allocation. And what's nice is in step four, I've received a fair share. And then in step five, I'm given more money, which means I'm going to end up with more than what I defined as a fair share, which is interesting. In the sealed bid method, everybody gets more than what they consider a fair share. Everybody's happy as long as nobody knows what other people bid and got, because that tends to create some animosity. But the process gives every person more than a fair share as they defined it. So let's do a couple examples. Example one, we've got some roommates that are going separate ways. Maybe they graduated and they're off to different universities. Let's say that after graduation. And they need to divide several items. So they make the following. secret bids. So there's the couch, the TV, the video game system, and of course the surround sound system. And they each are going to give it a value. A thinks the couch is worth 150, the TV's worth 200, the video game system's worth 250, and the sound system's worth 50. B thinks the couch is worth 100, the TV worth 250, the video game worth 150, and the surround sound worth 100. So first, we need to find everybody's fair share. So first, we're going to look at A's total amount of money. If we add up all of A's bids, we end up with 2, 4, 5, 650. So A's total is 650. And so A's fair share, at least in A's view, is A should receive $325 worth of stuff, 650 divided by 2, because there's two people. Well, B's total. If we add up this, two, three, four, five, six hundred dollars. So according to B, a fair share would be three hundred dollars worth of stuff. Okay. Now each item is awarded to the highest bidder. A bid higher on the couch. B bid higher on the TV, A bid higher on the video game, B bid higher on the surround sound. So what we're going to do is we're going to say A receives the couch, which has a value of 150, and the video game which has a value of 250. This is all according to A, which means A received a total value of $400. Remember, A's fair share was 325. That means to break even, A will pay the $75 to the pot. because they received $75 more than their fair share. B receives 
the TV for 250, and the surround sound for 100. This is now according to B. Everything's in terms of B now, which means B received a total value of 250 plus 100, $350. Well, B said fair share was $300, so B pays $50, the difference, to the pot. This is the initial allocation. But what I want to notice is $75 was paid into the pot and $50 was paid into the pot. The pot now has $75 plus $50, $125 in the pot. So this $125 needs to be split evenly between the parties. So if we split it evenly between the both, that's going to be divide by 2, $62.50 each is given back. It's almost like a refund, which means now in the end, A has a couch and video game. Initially, A paid 75, but now A is going to get 62.50 of that back. So still paying the difference between those, which is $12.50. So A gets the couch in the video game and paid $12.50. Initially, they paid $75 and got $62.50 back, so the difference, $12.50, is what A paid. B has the TV and the surround sound system. And B initially paid $50 but got $62.50 back. B actually received the difference. 62.50 minus 50 is $12.50. So for our final allocation, both A and B ended up with some of the stuff. They've paid or received some money, but both of them feel like they've received $62.50 more than a fair share based on their definitions. Both are walking away very happy with the final result. Now, with two people, this isn't that exciting of an example. So let's try one more example, maybe that's got three players in it. Three people are dividing an estate. Grandma passed away, had three kids. The three of them have to divide up the house the vacation home, and the small business. And we're going to list everything in thousands of dollars because these are going to be bigger numbers otherwise. Let's say A believes the house is worth 250000 the vacation home worth 170000 and the small business is worth 300000 B believes the house is worth 300000 the vacation home is worth 180000 and the small business is worth 225000 and C believes the house is worth 280,000, the vacation home 200,000, and the small business 270,000. Just like before, we're going to go through the same exact process now to see who gets what and how much money. First, we're going to total A up. If we total A 5 6, that's going to be 720,000. So A's total is $720,000. And if we want A's fair share, we divide that 720 by 3 to get $240,000.
if we total B, 5, 6, 7, 0, 5, so B's total equals 705. So to get B's fair share, we'll do 705 divided by 3, which is 235. And for C's total, if we add them up, we get 6,750. So C's total value is 750. Divide by 3 to get C's fair share at $250,000. OK. Now that we know what everybody's fair share is, we will award each item to the highest bidder. The house goes to B, the vacation home goes to C, and the small business goes to A. It's nice this time everybody got something. Sometimes somebody walks away with nothing but cash, but the cash offsets the fair share, and so it works out. So it looks like A receives the small business, which has a value of $300,000. A said a fair share was 240. So A has to offset that and pays the difference, $60,000, to the pot. B receives the house, which B values at $300,000. But B says a fair share is, three, is 235, so B has to pay the difference. B pays $65 to the pot. C receives the vacation home. which is worth $200,000, according to C. But C said a fair share was 250. C is short $50,000, and so C is going to receive money from the pot. The difference between 200 and 250 is $50,000 from the pot. So now money's gone into the pot and money's gone out of the pot. Everybody feels like they've received their fair share at this initial allocation because they've hit that fair share value either by paying the difference or receiving the difference, depending on if they were above or below the fair share amount. But now there's a problem. The pot has money left over. The pot had $60 put into it, $65 put into it, and $50 removed from it, which means there is $75 left in the pot to be split three ways. $25 each if we divide by three. So not only did everybody get a fair share, they got a bonus $25 out of it. Actually, it's $25,000 because our units are in thousands. So for our final allocation, A received the small business, and initially paid 60, but got 25 back, which means they really paid 35. And let's go ahead and say $1,000. B received the house, initially paid 65, but got 25 of it back. So that means they only paid $40,000. And C received the vacation home. And initially received 50, then received an additional 25. They received 50 plus 25, $75,000. And in this final allocation, everybody received not only what they defined as a fair share, but they got an extra $25,000 out of the deal. 
So that's the method of sealed bids. I think it's really amazing how everybody can get more than a fair share in what seems like a discrete pot. It really is a win-win for everybody involved. It's time for you to practice this method on a few problems, and then we'll move on to our next topic with our next video.